Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the next match of the night, and it is for the Who's Number One Middleweight Championship, scheduled for a 30-minute time limit. Introducing first out of the blue corner, representing Fight Sports Miami, Florida, here is Mikael Galvao. Only 17 years of age, a phenomenal technician and one of the fastest rising stars in the sport. A huge fan favorite, Mika Galvao, stepping onto the mats here in the finals of the Who's Number One Championship in this 185 pound division. Yeah, Mika, despite his young years, is already a superstar in Brazil, but he's making an impact in North America and well beyond this weekend here, who's number one. And I cannot wait for his hotly anticipated rematch with Ty Rutolo for our middleweight final here. And now introducing his opponent out of the red corner, representing Atos Jiu-Jitsu, San Diego, California. Here is Ty Rutolo! Ty Rutolo. One half of the famous Rutolo brothers competing here in this 185. Don't forget that his brother Kate is gonna be back out later in the 155 final but first this young man has business to attend to taking on something of an old rival in the form of Mika Gaval. let's take a little look at the tail of the tape here we have two teenagers have right, guys, risen to the top here. of the, Step back of the pack here uh, who's number one very closely matched in height and age and our referee Gabriel Machines get things underway ready Mika ready time with the blue ankle bands, Mika Galvao with the red ankle bands, Tyro Tolo. If there's any one thing I would advise the viewers at home in this one, Chase, is do not blink. Yeah, don't get up. This is going to be nonstop action. Now, both have had flawless runs to the final, but Tyro Tolo has submitted both Johnny Tama and Dante Leon on his run here, securing, of course, $2,000 in bonuses, but also looking absolutely phenomenal throughout. And the gas tanks on both of these athletes is just incredible. Tyro Tolo. A perfect 2 0 via submission so far in this tournament, as you mentioned. A dash choke versus Johnny Tama. An arm triangle variation versus Dante Leon. In the taking last 10 two, seconds. In the last 10 seconds of a 50 minute match, taking out two IBJJF World No Gi champions in a row by submission. The 2019 lightweight and middleweight champion, both succumbing to Rotolo. Galvao his two matches to get into this final. A 15 minute decision win over the, at this point, something of a veteran, William Tackett. And a submission win by Armlock against Jacob, the Hillbilly Hammer Couch, who ended up taking the third place prize here in this 185 division. But right now, a cautious start from both men. They, they know each other well, Chase. They have history. Yeah, the last time they fought was 20, uh, 2019 as blue belts. Uh, with Mika uh, running away with that match a little bit, winning uh, 10 to 2, I want to say the final score was. But that's a long time ago. Both have evolved tremendously. I want to say I, that was a gi match, right? It was a gi match, the uh, European Championships there. Interesting. And, and uh, I think the measured beginning of measured approach is a sign of respect between both athletes. They know one small mistake will cost them the match. So uh, the wild scrambles that we're used to seeing Ty just initiate upon launch, we're not, uh, he's not so open with those at the moment. No, definitely a cautious start, a respectful start, one might call it. And I feel that that those moments will definitely come. We're just going to have to be prepared, because when they come, they'll come with no warning. Come on, guys, enough hand fighting. Let's go. You Interesting stay to know, standing, isn't it, that they fought down. all the way beginning of, you say, 2019? Yes, sir. Wow. So that is nearly three years ago. And how much have these guys evolved in that time? Of course, physically, technically. And that's a long time to mature in, in, in just the jiu-jitsu sense as well, because both these guys have been competing very frequently over the last couple of years. Tyro Tolo had an incredible 2020, had some really amazing performances, and hasn't, I believe, competed in the gi since 2019. Yeah, after that breakup performance at ADCC, Ty had told us that he felt no gi was where he wanted to spend his time, and 
that's where he and his brother have really flourished in the last couple of years, and it's been a, a real treat to watch. Meanwhile, Mika has just been absolutely demolishing the scene in Brazil. He and Noki, uh, it seemed destiny that they would meet here uh, in the WNL Championships. Now, a lot of feints from Rutolo, who is moving forward and looking to catch a leg, but I feel a clear strategy here from Galvao that he is Circle. absolutely waiting for an attack. He's a he's a very effective counter fighter, and I feel like he knows that Ty's game is to come forward, and he's he's got something in in his bag of tricks. He's waiting for Ty to come forward, right? Yeah, I mean he's got a, a bevy of submissions at his disposal. Great guillotine, one that we've seen him use in Nogi plenty of times, either to finish the match or really just capitalize and sweep. Um, oh, there's that foot sweep attempt. I'm seeing a bit more commitment from each athlete as the match progresses, right? The feints are becoming a little stronger, they're starting to warm up, loosen up, and gain a little confidence throughout these exchanges. There's a lot of reading going on between the both athletes here. And I'm really enjoying it despite the kind of measured approach. Heavy on the head. I just think once once a, a shot is actually committed to, it's just going to be this scramble <laughs> that you know won't stop until something insane happens. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see a little more commitment from both sides here. I feel stop. like you know, we are right on Look, the moment there where our referee is going to give them a warning. Five minutes of only hand fighting. I need you guys to commit with something. All right, if you want to stay standing. Come here with a takedown, or I'm gonna start to give penalties. Okay. okay. All right. Shake hands. Step back. Let's go. A very clear instruction there from our referee, telling them that you have to commit. You have to attack in this wrestling. If you want to wrestle, that's no problem here. Who's number one? But we need to see effective techniques. We need to see legit attacks. Five minutes of feints and hand fighting is is not enough. Heavy on the head there is Tyro Otolo. That's a classic Atos strategy, isn't it? A, ta a tactic, I should say, of weighing down on the crown of the head, pulling their opponent's heads down to look at the mat. It's something that Andre Galvao basically wrote the, the book on in his ADCC career. And Ruotolo and many other athletes from the, ADCC, uh, sorry, from the Atos uh, team have, have used that to great effect. Ty picking up the volume here, picking up the pace. Penalty for blue. We can see the referee penalty sees of the, it match, the same yeah. way. Yeah, I feel so. I feel like that Galvao is definitely waiting. He is, he's playing a very cautious game, allowing I feel allowing Ty to actually pick up his leg. Look at look at the stance of Galvao. He's actually offering his leg there, but he's not going forward in in the sense that he's not actually attacking. Oh, <laughs> that was a bob and a weave right there. That was more right of a there. striking yeah. sequence we just saw there. <laughs> Now we see now we see a little more aggression from Galvao. Finally coming forward now, popping on the shoulder, getting a little bit more uh, a little more attention, a little more aggression behind those almost palm strikes to the to the torso. They, I feel that now the hand fighting is definitely coming up a level. You see it in their faces, a little more intensity coming now and they appear to be getting angry. <laughs> well, it's not a bad thing if it results in some some exchanges. Right now we're still, we're almost seven minutes into this match and we're yet to hit the mat. We need to see some grappling techniques here. Oh, there's a big foot sweep attempt. But they're both trying to chip away at each other's base with these foot sweeps here. Penalty for like red! That. Yeah, there's a penalty now for Ruotolo here because he's not entering. He's not entering. He's, he's working, hand fighting. He's, he's clinching, but there's no, there's no commitment, and that's what we need to see. We need to see the athletes going forward and actually trying to put their, their opponent down onto the mat. And I feel it's, uh, 
Uh, one penalty apiece here. It's, it's, uh, that should be a wake-up call, these guys, to get busy. I feel like there's almost too much respect here. Galvao seems to have settled down again onto his heels. Not really going forward here. He's baiting, he's baiting Galvao to come in. And look at this, this is clear that, that Galvao is not engaging. He's backing up, he is not coming forward. And he's offering his leg, it's a, it's a, it's a trap. And I feel that, Guys, let's that Rutolo go. is smart There's not to take it. one penalty each already. You're gonna let me decide this? Come on. In 10 minutes or nothing, let's go. There is the first significant attack we've seen in this match so far. Galvao on bottom, Rutolo on top. Stop! Oh, that was an errant cool. kick to the face. Looked like a possible heel That's to the eye. Is. Yeah, definitely a poke in the eye with something. Hopefully nothing too serious. We did see a very bad heel, uh, 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 poke to the eye yesterday that resulted in Mason Fowler being unable to continue in the heavyweight division. That was extremely unfortunate and we wish him very well and a speedy recovery. We Hopefully it should be enough for Galvao just to take a moment to... No, 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 you go back down. Now restart in the same position. Let's reset on the center. Get a little closer. Get a little... Mika, vem pra cá. Go to your back. Go to your back, put your legs up. Fight! Okay, restart here from this open guard position, and now this is uh, this is definitely where Rutolo likes to be, right? He loves this guard passing. We saw him use this to great effect in his two matches yesterday against Tama and Leon. Has to contend with a very flexible guard from Galvao. I really hope, because you can see him actually rubbing his face there during that sequence. Really hope that that blow to the face hasn't uh, affected him too badly. Well, his transitions are as smooth as ever. He's still moving, right? He's still moving quite fluidly. And what's interesting to me is that he didn't insist on just standing up, right? Because Ty's playing a little bit distant-based game. Mm -hmm. So the counter he had planned was clearly off of the single leg and the single leg alone. You can still see, you can actually see, I think the, eyes, the eye may even be closing. He seems to have his eye closed. He seems to be kind of blinking quite a lot. And I think it's really important in, in that case that he, he maintains a, a, as tight a control over Rutolo as he possibly can. Because if he starts letting him go and they start getting the distance, he'll, I wonder if he can actually see the uh, well enough. Rutolo. To react to Rutolo's attacks. And the judges favor Rutolo at this point in the match. Still very, very close. No real significant attacks having taken place. This little exchange that took him down onto the mat. Put in... Gava on the bottom, and there's that smother that Ruotolo likes so well. Definitely getting a strong reaction from Miki. does not like his face being covered. And who does? But it seems to be a winning strategy for Ty. And Ty's movement is starting to increase now, increase the momentum here. He's very successful at this kind of pass against Dante Leon, where he'd run around to the north-south position. Crowd game into this. Well, we try not to make things political here. Who's number, who's number one? But that's what happens when there's not enough jujitsu happening on the mats. The the crowd end up getting a little antsy, and we really need to see some more commitment here. There's uh, still so much respect going on between these guys. Ideally, we need uh, we need Rotolo to engage here. The onus is very much upon the top man in, in these kind of matches. In the, in the no-gi scene, when you're on top, you have to engage, you have to go forward. You start taking backward steps, you start disengaging. The referee is going to be taking a very close look at you. But of course, the deeper you go into somebody's guard, the more opportunity for them to attack. Something of a conundrum. Stay engaged, stay engaged. Stop! 
Let's move to the center. Guys, I need more action from both of you. Mika, you can attack from the guard. You can attack more aggressive to pass. We both know you guys' game. You guys go for the kill all the time. What's happening? Everybody's watching. Let's do this. Come on. Let it out. You can hear very clear instructions from our referee, Gabriel Martins, telling him, listen, the world is watching. Everybody is expected to see a real match here, and right now, these guys are so respectful, respectful of each other's game, so wary, I would say, of the attacks, that, the danger that each man poses, that they're extremely careful not to engage too much, but here, here's a, a possible entry, look at this now. He got a great position to sweep, but Ty slips out. Some of the, some of the uh, anticipation we're having is just from the fluidity of, of these transitions. I mean, they're not, they don't look like they're working hard, but they're moving quite a bit in those exchanges. Now we're back on the feet. Let's see if we see a, a new approach. Oh, big big. foot sweep there from Rotolo. Pops back up to Galvao. I think that he could have followed him down to the mat there and rode the position, but... But that makes an impression on the judges, right? You start throwing your opponent around like that. Again, Mika baits the foot, hoping Ty takes the single leg here. I feel like Galvao is breathing a little harder now. You yes, know where uh, happens if he grabs that leg? What does Mika have planned? It's <laughs> a great question. I mean, we're over 10 minutes into this match now. And it's definitely been a long weekend of action. You know, both these guys gas tanks so without question. They, uh, as young as they are, as highly conditioned, highly trained as they are. Not a, not a concern that they may run out of gas, but you can see there's the corner of the Atos team, left to right, Andre Galvao, Cade Rotolo at the center, Kainan Duarte on the right. Urging Rotolo to, to get busy here. I really feel that that foot sweep that, that Ty is, uh, is kind of putting out there, the Galvao keeps his, his front leg so light, it almost like he's, he wants, he wants Rotolo to snatch that leg up. He's got something waiting. Electing now to pull guard. Trying to suck the leg in is Galvao, but Rotolo is disengaging out. You back gotta into go. His position. You gotta go. Look at that. The way that he goes from that upside down guard position into this transition. Rotolo riding the motion, but not over yet. The leg is still very much in play. Man, these guys are so You've got to commit now, with it. We commit with the pass. Right there, that sequence. I'm going to hit another penalty like if that game keeps on going. North -south position I'm going to hit another penalty. Because wrap up the legs, forcing Ty to go for that pretzel bolo, which nearly worked for him. But that's going to be, I think, the way this plays out. If Ty runs around north-south, dives in, he can hunt for the legs, rinse and repeat. Again, Galvao is baiting Rotolo to enter, and Rotolo is not falling for it. Now he knows that there are leg locks waiting for him. Look at the flexibility there that Rutolo has or had one of his legs stapled to the floor with his own foot and was pushing the other one. Look at that. Many other grapplers would simply have succumbed in that kind of position. But, oh, wow, look at this. A little, almost like a possum guard from Galvao. Galvao is really baiting Rutolo to come in. But Rutolo is just not moving forward. And <laughs> Ty 
some frustration from Mika's corner seeing that Rotola's not taking the bait. Interesting yeah. to note that that's exactly what they want him to do is try and dive into north-south. Yep. Ty sensed it and not taking that bait. However, it's resulting in kind of a cat and mouse game here of what to do next. Yeah, from our vantage point, we can see the uh, the Fight Sports corner. We can see his father, Melky Galvao, his coach, and also Victor Doria, both urging the referee. Penalty kind of like for this Red! And there it is. It's a penalty for Ruotolo because he's, he's on top and he's moving, but it really is a question. If you don't go forward, if you don't pass. engage, if you're Close not passing. Close the distance. Close the distance. Close the distance. Look at that flexibility. Look at that. Look at that stretching. Galvão, Galvão recovering the guard, flipping around, but stop. Let's move this way. Five, gotta do this one. I'm pushing in. He's pushing I know. me. He's strong. I know. I know he's strong. Hey, it's not my fault. I'm passing. He's not doing anything. Some frustration creeping in from all Fight. all avenues of the arena. The athletes, the coaches, and the fans here are definitely perplexed by the puzzle being presented. As you called it, the championship minutes. over 12 minutes remaining in this match. Mika, you're gonna be next. You gotta attack from the bottom as well. Very you gotta create something game. from the bottom as well. You gotta initiate. You got to initiate as well, Mika. You're just waiting for him. Stop! Very frustrating Fight. match for uh, both the corners involved as well, the Galvao and the Atos crew and the Fight Sports guys. They're both frustrated because they both feel that that neither guy is really committing to any attacks and they feel very hard done by by the penalties that are being issued so far. But it's a, it's a very frustrating match for everybody involved. And more so, the, the most of all, the competitors. Has to be the competitors. Just over 11, 11 minutes remaining. It's almost upside down possum guard that Galvao is playing. I would like to see Mika uh, be a little more aggressive. He's, In coming up, possum. He's too clearly waiting to counter. Right, and, and Ty doesn't want to do it. So you can't expect somebody to, to dive recklessly into a position where they, they know that there is an attack waiting because it's clear that Galvao can very quickly initiate a, a, a response from that bottom north-south position. And it makes no sense at all for Rotolo to dive headfirst into those positions if he knows that there's so much danger. The equivalent of sticking your neck out into a guillotine, why would you do that? So I, I feel like you're right here, Chase, that possibly the Galvao needs to work to come up from bottom as well. I would not want to be a judge in this match, I'll be honest with you. Continuing the trend of unexpected turn of events, I don't think anyone would have predicted this type of match from Mika Galvao and Tyro Tolo on paper, but here we are entering the final 10 minutes. Our next judge's favor coming up any second. Judge's favor, Mikael Galvao. Well, okay, so the first 10 minutes the judges were very much favoring Ty. The second 10 minutes, they're very much favoring Mika, but... I don't know about very much. It's just, <laughs> it's just favoring, I think. Okay, yeah, okay. That's a little bit of a, uh, an exaggeration on my part. Favoring is enough because it's hard to... It's hard to, uh, to really call one or the other here in a match where so, so much is happening and yet so little has really occurred for us to be able to 
to write down on people that, that this attack has happened, that attack has happened. Now, though, we finally see Galval playing from this closed guard position, trying to draw Rutolo in. Here we see another lumberjack sweep attempt here from Galval. Rotolo aggressively hand fighting from top to try and get those hands free. Look at that grip there that Galval has off the wrist. Rutolo's posture and hand fighting so far from this top position, solid. Galvao trying to draw him in, trying to create some kind of upper body control, but they're so slippy after nearly 22 minutes of, of, of match time. They're so sweaty. It's, it's certainly be very been difficult. difficult. I mean, right. we haven't necessarily seen a lot of uh, decisive actions here, but they are working all the same. But I think it would be fair to say that any significant achievement here, be it a sweep, a pass, a back take, that's enough to win the match in these next coming minutes here. And I hope something decisive does happen because otherwise we will have one set of a very unhappy teammates and coaches no matter who wins. Yeah, the last thing we want here is a contentious decision. We would prefer to see some kind of decisive action that allows us to point clearly at one winner, one winner or another. But Still this close guard position right here. And now we see a little posture control there from Galvao, trying to bring that arm across the center line, possibly work through the back. Look at that, the hand on the mouth, of really Galvao does not like it. He really shaking his face off as quickly as possible and answering back with his own. And this is becoming a, this is becoming a very unusual kind of exchange, not real jiu-jitsu techniques. Just neutralizing each other in most aspects so far. Framing, aggressive framing from Tyro Tolo. We see a brief moment on his feet from Tyro Tolo. Very difficult to open the close guard from this kneeling position, which is. Yeah, uh, most of the time, if someone does not want to open their guard, you will have to stand up to open it yourself. Ty seems to be hoping that Mika chooses to open the guard, but they haven't been cooperating with each other all night, so I don't think he's gonna get any favors here. You see him trying to build his base up and stand. Here he is on both feet now. Posture's still a little bit broken as he pushes on Mika's face some more. We may have to build in face smothering to our judges' criteria, seeing if that's scoring or not scoring. Who knows? at this point. Pretty much the only effective techniques that have been employed in this match. The final five minutes, almost 25 minutes of action so far and very little to write home about. The crowd getting restless and, and surprisingly so, to be honest with you.
There's five minutes, you guys gotta go. You got to try to open the guard. Your focus is to open the guard. Okay, here we go. One last scramble that sets in. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Three and a half minutes left. A ref crying out. Do not let's stop. go. He believes less than three minutes remaining now. We're into the final 10% of this match. Let's speculate, Al. Who you have? Yeah. Only so I wouldn't do this, feel, but it's, it's... I feel like I feel like the most contentious decision that we've had all weekend was that yesterday in the 155 pound uh, semi-final match between Koldabadi and Gabriel Souza that was a split decision, victory in favor of Souza, and that caused a lot of conversation it caused a lot of dialogue and debate afterwards as to who deserved to win that one and there was so much more to analyze in that match than there has been in this entire 30 minutes or 28 minutes and something it's uh it was so much easier to point to why one person deserved to win over the other in this match the hardest challenge is finding a reason to justify why somebody won as opposed to the edge that they had over the other. There's been very little significant action in this match that would point to one or the other to being called the winner. I truthfully cannot pick a winner in this case. I feel like both grapplers have, are as frustrated as we are at this stage, as viewers, as fans of jiu-jitsu. I mean, to be honest, I feel, I feel the most frustration in this entire match are the, uh, the coaches in the corners. I'm looking over and I'm seeing that the Galvao's coaches are so upset. The Rutolo's coaches, Andre and, and, and Cade, are livid because they feel like well, they feel like they feel they both feel that the other side are at fault, and it's 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 very difficult to to place the blame here because both athletes have been so cagey, so cautious. I don't want to single anyone out for having, uh, you know, forced the match to play out like this. And I also don't want to uh, signal or, or, or point out any one athlete for having an edge over the other. It's, it's very, very difficult. the best laid plans not working out quite the way we thought they would. It seems they both had very clear game plans, very clear counters uh, that successfully complemented each other in the worst way for a viewing experience, right? And uh, they've stayed committed to those game plans. And we've resulted in this. So our judges certainly have a, a tall test ahead of them trying to pick a winner. Do you choose Nika, who has never had his guard pass and been very fluidly moving throughout positions, or Ty pushing the pace from the top, but also not really committing to actually trying to pass all the way? It's It's been a tough way, a tough, tough road to get here. Yeah, final 10 seconds now. We're moments away from a judge's decision here. Uh, who's number one championship, this middleweight final. A full 30 Ten. minutes of competition time. Rotolo gets his hands in the air. Galvao stays on the mat. And... But I see, I like this moment of sportsmanship at the end. I think this is what matters most of all. The respect that these athletes have for each other. In the face of frustration, in the face of disappointment, potential disappointment, one guy is going to go home the winner, one guy is going to go home the loser. Let's see what the judges have to say.
Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by split decision, and new, who's number one middleweight champion, Ty Rotolo! Well, as we said, definitely a split crowd year and a split decision victory for Ty Rotolo. I have to say he was pushing the action quite a bit, but again, never really made it all the way. So tough road, but very happy Ty Rutolo, our new champion here, the Who's Number One Championships, has the belt, has $30,000. I wonder how much of it happiness or how much of it is relief. In a match that contentious, in a match that close, really the decision could have gone either way, and it ended up being a split decision in favor of Rutolo. I feel like some in the crowd were uh, a little surprised that it was actually called split